we've got a leak. You're six feet. Hey, so what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, yeah, this is our second month in full-time RV and we are absolutely loving it, but we recently have had a leak. Uh, it was a pesky one, but I found it. I got it figured out. So hopefully this will help you uh, down the road. So what was happening, we had a little puddle every once in a while underneath our pass-through storage. How I discovered the leak, this uh, our measurement pole was soaked uh, in water. And so the water was kind of leaking underneath this part of the wall. So I thought, okay, there's a leaking fitting back here. So I took off or I took out everything, which was fun. Uh, I took the other side wall off, crawled back behind this to the Nautilus panel. So what I figured out is the less that we used the water, the more pressure built up. Does that make sense? We, if we wouldn't use the sink faucet or a toilet or you know anything like that, it would build up more and more pressure. And then that's what eventually started causing the leak to happen. There was one fitting that was a little bit looser than the rest of them, and that was the weakest point. So it would cause that drip. And in the meantime, let's say it drips for about four, four or five minutes, and then we use the water. And then I come down here to check, it wouldn't be leaking, but we'd have a puddle on the ground. I couldn't figure it out. But I did finally finally put put two and two together so most of you know what this is both of these are water pressure regulators right this is like a nine dollar version that's like a 35 dollar version or a 30 dollar version i just started using the nine dollar version because our other one like this broke so this was my backup and i started using it we used it for about a month and it failed on us so how do i know that this thing failed when you turn your water on at the faucet and the pressure surges and then dies back down to what it's normally at which normal is pretty sorry for an rv anyways uh, then that's your first sign that this thing is failing so what caused this failure you ask i think i'm not sure but i think it's because we are in arizona and arizona has some really hard water there's a lot of sediment in the water as well and i think that's what finally built up over time inside of this thing and caused it to where that plunger was not going back and stopping the pressure off at 40 to 50 PSI like it's supposed to. So the more increased pressure causes fittings to start leaking and then you have puddles that come and go and make you go crazy. So am I saying that one water pressure regulator is better than the other? No, because I think in this case, any of them would fail. We prefer, and again, this is just a backup that I started using and I didn't replace our other uh, dial one or adjustable one quick enough, but we like to have the adjustable ones over the preset ones because we know pretty much exactly what our pressure is and you can kind of dial it up. Just anything below 60 to 55 PSI for an RV is recommended. We usually go at about 52 to 55. So we got lucky. That wasn't a bad leak, but it was definitely a leak and I wanted to pass that information on things to watch out for in your RV. So now that that's fixed and out of the way, we're gonna go hike around the Montezuma National Castle Montezuma Cashel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so now that that's fixed, we're fixing to head out to go see Montezuma Castle National Monument. Say that five times fast. So come on, let's go check this out. Chase has his North Carolina stick. Katie's got her Arizona hiking stick. Nick's just happy.
you're six feet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was an awesome hike. I wouldn't really call it a hike. It was paved, mm -hmm. it was flat, mm -hmm. and it was short. So I would vote that that's, it was, it was handicap accessible. Yes. It was dog friendly. Very dog friendly. They kid, have the bark ranger. Yeah, the bark ranger. <laughs> the kid friendly. Um, I, yeah, Montezuma Castle National Monument is a definite, uh, go see Absolutely. it's over 700 years old the peak was around 1300 AD and it housed what 30 to 50 people 30 to 50 yeah. people in the cliffs it's like it, five levels yeah it was really cool it was really awesome but we're gonna grab a bite to eat we're gonna have a little bit of tuna and we're gonna go on another hike can you do two hikes in one day well you know the first one's not really a hike <laughs> but yeah, you still can do two hikes in one day. Yeah, so absolutely. yes, so yes, if you cheat a little bit, you can <laughs> you can do two hikes in one day out here. But after lunch, we're gonna go on a hike of Yavapai Vista Point, and I'm pretty sure I didn't say that right. But anyways, that's where we're fixing to head next. So uh, let us get a bite to eat, and we'll head that way. How was that? It was fun. That was a lot. I smell the bathroom. <laughs> Anyways, that was that was a lot of fun. It wasn't very long. I don't think it was. It had the option to be long. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you could make it a 10, 12 mile. Beautiful scenery. Trail. Which one are we on? The Yabapai? Yeah. Yeah. It, if you can find parking, it's definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just dropped Nick off to get groomed, a bath, and uh, some tender love and care. He got a little dusty and dirty after those walks and just being outside in general here in the desert, you get a little dirty. You're not, you're not always clean. So we'll, we'll see how he, how he turns out. You travel with a dog and if you do need grooming when you're out on the road, do, how do you, how do you look for, for places? Do you look for a mobile groomer to come to you? Do you look for a local groomer? Just curious what you do uh, with your pets when you travel. He's so clean and Nick! Nick! He's so you are so stuffy! He's cold. He's cold. He's cold. Watch his tail. Don't break his tail. What's up, bud? Love this place. It's really nice. And what's the name of this again? This. Hillside, hillside Canine Resort and Spa. <laughs> I couldn't yes. remember it. I had to and read it's it. It's also the Hillside Canine Academy. They that's do, right. They do training here. Oh, that's cool. So, um, kind of all-encompassing daycare, yep. training, all of that. Yep. But, um, yeah, they spent a lot of time on Nick. <laughs> she said, yeah, he, he needed a good cleaning. So He needed more than a good cleaning. Yeah. And what's great is they used a shampoo called Dirty Dog. <laughs> Dirty. Well, it was fitting. <laughs> yep. And then they had special treats made with pumpkin. Oh, look at that. Nick. Chickle boy. Oh, yep. Thank and you. They loved Nick. Absolutely loved Nick. And uh, scrubbed him up good for us. Cool. So, nice and clean. He doesn't stink. Yeah. Well, his breath does. I can still smell yeah. his breath. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that there's much we can do about that. I know, right? Yeah, puppy. 
Well, so that pretty much explains the whole day. We're exhausted. The hikes were fun. Nick got a bath. Yeah. And we fixed a leak. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. And yes, glad you fixed the leak. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, we'll uh, we'll see y'all later.